Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again. We're back down in the shop, one of my fa most favorite places to be. I love getting down here and and I'm all excited to get started on a project, but there's a couple things I want to talk about first. Uh, this Saturday, I'm really excited because I'm going to a woodworking show. Uh, it's called the Woodworking Shows and they, are, um, they run all over the country, but it'll be in Secaucus, New Jersey. Secaucus, <laughs> from my New York accent coming out. Secaucus, New Jersey, and uh, I'll be meeting up with my buddy Abe Elias, good friend of the show, famous knife maker from up in Canada, and uh, he's going to be running the uh, Lee Valley Veritas booth, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'll be there from, I guess, from about noon to four, you know, as I, you know I'm definitely going to be there during that time, hopefully a little longer if I could squeeze it out. Uh, but uh, if you can get a chance to stop by, and uh, you, you, I think you'll really enjoy it. I used to go to these woodworking shows a lot, and I used to go uh, and sit on, on a lot of the um, seminars. And that's where you really learn stuff. They they get these experts to uh, give seminars and on all kinds of subjects, and, and that's where you, you pick up tips and tricks and things like that. Not to mention all the great tools and everything that you can see and what's new and 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 Lee Valley has a ton. If you ever go to their website, they have a ton of uh, of tools and hardware and woodworking supplies and all kinds of supplies that you can use for anything. So I'm really excited to meet up with Abe. Uh, you know, we've been talking about this for a while, and this is the closest show to me that I can get to. So I had to wait a while to meet him. I'm looking forward to meeting him. And uh, like I said, I'll be there. And uh, if if you're in the area, Secaucus, New Jersey, uh, March seventh. And that's going to be uh, a great show to attend if you if you can make it. So uh, with that, uh, first off, let's start off with a, a little bit of footage that I have that I shot for Monday's video, but it was too long. And I, I'm trying to keep the videos down a little bit shorter because there's so much to see on YouTube. You don't want to see <laughs> my stuff. So um, here's a little bit of footage on the angle grinder that I shot. I think you might find it interesting, and then we'll get to a restoration. Okay, next up on the mosh, a uh, good friend of the show, Frank, that used to live in Whitestone. Frank said to me, he goes, you know, you're using the angle grinder a lot lately. I like that, huh? And I said, I really do. But I have to tell you, this tool is really dangerous. And, and when I say dangerous, not to your personal injury, to dangerous to screwing up a tool. In a millisecond, you can take a tool from, uh, you know, into put it right into trash. So... I want to give you a couple tips on this angle grinder if you, in case you see me use it and you want to try one out. Great tool, but there's some things you have to learn before you, you screw something up. So let me give you a couple this tips. This is the tool we're speaking of. And, you know, there are a lot of different accessories you can put on this angle grinder. And before you go out and buy a really good one, I would suggest buy an inexpensive one first. And I do prefer the paddle switches over the switch up here because, you know, it's much easier to control if you have to turn it on, shut it off. But that's just my personal preference. Um, this handle can screw into here, either side or the top, this handle. So that can be comfortable, if, you know, how you want to use it. But um, it comes with, this is what's on there now. It's called a flap disc. It's a flaps of sandpaper. But they also come with, you know, these type of discs. This is a grinding disc. This is only used for extreme hard rust conditions. It'll... This will put a lot of gouges into your metal. and But this you can feather uh, materials really nice and easy. But let me show you really important, uh, the most important part of using now, A few this videos ago, you saw me raving about this Stanley number 700 vice. It's a corner vice, and it's such a handy vice. And, and uh, you know, I'm so grateful because a lot of you guys that got it are, are so happy with it and said, I use it all the time, and that's what you want. You want a tool you could use all the time and something. So these have a, a wood jaw that will grip something without really damaging it. But what's so nice about it is I have this bench down here that I'll tell you how high this okay, bench this is. This particular bench is about 38 inches tall, which is about, I like my benches to come where my belt is, you know, where you wear your belt. And unless you wear your belt, unless you're Fred Mertz, and uh, you're going to wear your belt so high up that you got to pull your zipper down to blow your nose. This is about where you want it, somewhere about here. And when you put this uh, corner vise on here, what's so nice about it is what you, now you're working at a, a position that makes it real easy to use this grinder. And I'll show you now, why. Now, here you can see I, I positioned the crowbar, just an old crowbar, into the vise. And the reason this is so nice is because now this is about where you have your belt, correct? Now, what's nice about with the angle grinder, when you keep it here, 
your your elbows are acting as like shock absorbers with your hand so what you want this to just float over the surface because if you happen to dig into the surface it's going to ruin your project so you have one hand lifting under the handle one hand under the barrel of the machine and you're basically just letting the disc rest slightly onto the project you know very carefully here's another thing you have to have a lot of light down here because you want the light shining here that you could see where the disc is hitting so you'll see me I'm actually my head is always over right over the project as I'm having my arms swivel back and forth and it's just like you know it's it's such a, a great position to be in and I'll show you I'll just do this little area here Now you can see uh, by doing that you don't because what happens because that's a curved disc it tends to want to make a curved cut so you want it to be a flat cut especially in a flat area so that's why you just want this thing hovering around the surface and taking off little bits at a time not pressing too hard and, and it'll give you a flat surface that's the hardest part getting a flat surface a curved surface if you want to do a curved surface you have to really be light on it and just let it go around follow the curve but uh it's important to have light because you can see what's getting hit and what isn't getting now i'm going to give you a bird's eye view of what i see when i'm looking over here okay because the camera's right where my head should be now i'm going to show you that when I, sometimes you're just going to go up and back down and see if i have to tilt it a little bit to the left a little bit to the right Now, if you notice, this is a good thing to practice on a crowbar because it's got all these facets. So uh, in order to get it across the whole facet, you see, uh, without grinding down the, the corners, you want to float around here, then you'll flip the crowbar and then float around here or, you know, whatever tool you're using. So I hope that helps out because that's really important is, is position. The thing is that, uh, you know, work, that's a very worn disc in there. You see, it's not taken off a lot. So that's a good way to practice with a worn disc. If you put in a brand new disc or a very abrasive disc, you make a mistake, it's, you don't have a second chance. So I hope that helps out with the angle grind. If you're thinking of getting one, go ahead. You're going to love it. It's a cheap tool. You can pick them up for $20 and a couple discs and you'll have a ball. Okay, for today's first project, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of utility knives of all types, you know, especially these, the cast iron ones. But we're going to be looking at this uh, Walsco. I picked this up a while ago and, and I, I've always wanted to get to it, but it's a little more work than it looks like. Um, it, it's got these beautiful, you know... Uh, embossed name plates that you can fill in with paint it would look good but see here the blade is loose okay and the screw is tight but the blade is loose and when you have a utility knife that doesn't uh retract the main thing is you want a tight blade you know that's that's why you have a uh, non-retractable utility knives for the tightness of the blade so there's something going on in here let's take it apart uh and uh make sure be careful that you don't want to get tetanus so we'll take it apart and see what's going on Okay, now that we have the knife apart, we can see here what's going on. Now, uh, you can see there's a, the casting was very, uh, very well designed because first of all, it has that nice lanyard hole in the back that we like. And uh, it has the screw here, a little pocket that it fits into. It's got these little pins to stop the blades from rattling around in the handle. So it is a well designed, it's even got this little ledge here that puts pressure against the blade. So, but watch what happens when we put this knife together, okay? Watch what happens. I'm going to squeeze both sides See that it's not warped, but there's something holding this, uh, and that's what's creating that gap. We want this to be tight up front like that so that it holds the blade tight. But we have, a, and like I said, it's not a warp. I mean, it'd be easy to put on a belt in or try and get, but it's not that. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what it is that's pushing here, and I'm thinking that this uh, 
this standoff here is pressing into this pocket. And if you look here, it seems like it's tight right here, but it's, uh, it's loose in the front. See, it seems like this is the pivot point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a file and just take a little bit off of here, just a very little bit off the top to see if we can get that to squeeze in tighter and make this uh, become uh, a better fit. Okay, now we uh, we were able to take this down here and, and get it to the point where that blade is solid and that's the way it's supposed to be. Now we can start working on the knife and let's get to it. Okay, now after the, the wire brushing, you have to go very, very gentle on because uh, wire brushing on aluminum is, is bad news. So you just did it to take off. They put a paint or coating or something on there. And then I used the uh, fiber wheel to get it down to this thing. Now you see there's all these minute scratches on here. And this is where the polishing comes in. So it's looking good. Let's get, and we did the uh, face of the screw here. Straighten that up. Now we'll get to the polishing. Okay, now we polish it out by hand, and, and you can see here we have it down to a mirror finish, you know. But the thing is that it shows, it will show, because when you get it to a mirrored finish, you do show some of the, the imperfections from the factory and also from years of use like these, you know. So to get rid of that, you know, if it was a brand new tool, we could leave it like this. But uh, because it's an older tool... What we're going to do is we'll go over it with a little bit of a scotch bright just to give it a little bit of a dullness so that it doesn't show all those little imperfections. It tends to look a little better from a distance, but, you know, right now, it, it like I said, it, it is mirror. So um, I wish it was new. I could have left it like this, but uh, we'll do that. We'll clean this out and we'll fill it in. We'll be back. Now, you know, my favorite part. Remember what this utility knife looked like before we started. And we'll call this project done. Look at this, huh? You know, I did go over it with that uh, scotch Bright, and I doled everything out, but I wasn't happy with it. So I had to come up with something else, and I figured, hey, you know what we haven't done in a while? Let's jewel it. And I did some jeweling on here, and boy, that really makes it pop, don't it? Just on the sides, the uh, top I polished out, left everything nice. Put a new blade in here. This is a Stanley Heavy Duty blade. It's a little bit sharper, uh, thicker than the uh, standard blades, but it is absolutely rock solid. And... Um, for the inside here, I did that with a Tamiya clear red, and I put it in extra thick. Remember those enameled Russian metals and everything? They make? I always love that look, so that's what I was going for. Put it in very thick and then just went over it with some clear uh, 400 wet-dry sandpaper to pop out the letters, and boy, that's, uh, that's something else, isn't it? Anyway... Uh, yeah, this one's done. Put this one up. So, hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks very much for tuning in. Take care now. Have a nice day. Bye bye. <laughs>